Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel and the Bluefield Sports Gun Room. We're here on the healing bench today as Connors calls it. Not much healing needed doing though. Today we're going to be mag loading another Virgin M&P 1522 from Smith & Wesson, in my opinion the best 2.2 semi-automatic, all round uh, 2.2 semi-automatic available here in the UK. I did make a previous video fitting a load of mag load bits to another customer's gun. He was very, very happy with the end result. We're all pleased to hear. I'm not going to go through all the nitty gritty again. I'm going to fast forward all of that. But what I'm more interested in today are two uh, very special products. So we have the Black Rifle BR22 trigger. This is made specifically for the 1522. In my experience, when you use mil spec ones, you can have a, a little bit of uh, issues with the, the hammer height and you might need to shim it. But this is designed to drop in and run super reliably from the off. But even more exciting than that, we have here the very first production. Uh, 1522 carbon handguard from Magload. So I'm going to be fitting this to the rifle as well. We don't have any uh, slotted versions at the time of filming. This is being made probably a good week or two uh, before the release of these handguards. So this is literally the first one off the production line. Tom Elloway, who is having this rifle, he is a fellow Bluefield Sports team member. He would like the slotted version, but we've said, look, you're either gonna have to wait a little longer uh, or we can fit this in the time being and then you can come back and swap it out. So this isn't what is gonna be permanently mounted onto his rifle. Uh, we will swap out the slotted version. It's got M-lock slots uh, in four positions along and he's gonna swap it out. But for time being, he's gonna be the first person out there with the Maglode carbon fiber handguard. They will also be available in a 12 inch and a 16 inch. I've got the 16 inch version here because it is a brand new gun. It hasn't been cut down yet. I don't even know if Tom is gonna cut it down. He might do so. He might even be back for a 12 inch at, at some point. Uh, but yeah, this these have been in development now for I think 12, to 18 months and they don't seem too complicated. The construction uh, is obviously a carbon fiber tube uh, and then we have the uh, the polymer ends and nuts and it is designed specifically for the 1522. So it's got the, the matching block. Some issues you get with aftermarket handguards, say mil spec aftermarket handguards, it doesn't have that mating block and you get a lot of flex and because it's a polymer gun, that can affect accuracy. So this is designed to minimize that. It is super, super light. Probably, I'm gonna say it, the lightest out there for handguards for the 1522, just like with the magazine tube for shotguns that Maglo makes as well. Uh, I think starting price, I think for the non-slotted 12 inch, it's gonna be about 150 pound, and then a slight increase if you want slotted or the 16 inch. <laughs> But go and check out the uh, the Magload website, uh, magload.co.uk. These should be live at the time of this video going live. So go and check that out. And if you're interested in one, pick one up. But let's get to it. I'm going to go into Superman mode, blitz through all the bits you've seen before. If you do want to go and see that in detail, there will be an icon that appears now, hopefully, uh, for the other video. So go and check that out. But let's get into it. Let's mag load this gun and then I will slow everything down when we get to the bits that we're most interested in today. So let's go. Right, so very early on in, we're uh, already slowing it down because I thought it's just better to strip everything off straight away. Uh, and I'm getting straight into the trigger. So to remove the trigger on these, it is a bit of a faff. Sometimes you've got to remove the grip or those pins and get the safety out. And then everything, as you probably saw, flies out. And then the trigger should just come out there. So that's your original trigger. Uh, you can do a lot to these to get them a lot nicer. I've buffed them, polished them, played around with them, upgraded the springs, but Tom's not having any of that. He's going straight for the upgrade kit. And the great thing about the upgrade kit is that it is all one piece. These can be quite fiddly. If you're not familiar with AR-15s or the 1522, they can be quite fiddly to uh, sort of put back in, nothing too hard, which might take you a couple of goes. But with this all being one unit, 
you're just going to be able to drop it straight back in. And I'm assuming, I don't think there's any additional new pins or anything in there. Um, I mean, they've got some instructions there. Don't need those. Things never go to plan when you have a camera out, do they? So it does look like there is a, a grub screw, maybe. I should have read the instructions. Nah. Definitely not using the instructions, definitely not. That's the offender right there. But you can see on the top here, let's have a, a wee look. You see you've got this screw here, and it's down in there that I need to get and maybe adjust. Time for some tiny Allen keys. Wow, this is going really well. Really well. Where's the Allen keys gone? Aha! Allen keys. As luck would have it, there was just one randomly sitting there. So what you need to do is wind that little grub screw there back. I've got a feeling I'm going to need this in a second as well. Right, so after that faff, we have a working trigger. So that's, that seems functional. And then I guess once it's now in, we now screw that grub screw down. Let's tighten this. So just a quick mention, if you ever do safeties or triggers, always make sure before you go any further that it is working, uh, which this seems to be. No problems. And then obviously it doesn't work when you put the safety on, that's, that's usually good. That's everything done with the lower. Uh, so we've got the Magwell safety and of course the new trigger and Andy mag release. Uh, so it's now, I'm gonna wait until last actually. I'm gonna do the bases now and then we get on to the hanger. Done the mags everything else is now done on the rifle unfortunately we only have the one that came the magazine that came with the rifle and the uh, spare one in stock these can be incredibly hard to get hold of so we currently have another order in here at bluefield sports so tom needs four for the comps so alex is very kindly lending him his for the time being so the other two will be fitted at a later date but that just leaves with the, the lower all now done, that just leaves the handguard. Um, so doing the handguard, you will require a special tool because in Smith & Wesson's wisdom, they decided to use their own proprietary nut. So you need your own proprietary tool. Luckily, we have uh, some here. Funny enough, those are from the Black Rifle kit. Now the Maglode carbon fibre handguards will be supplied with a tool 
we are just waiting for those to uh, come in, hence why the handguards haven't yet been released, but we've started making them. Uh, we always whip off uh, that anyway. We are going to have to remove the birdcage first, which can always be an interesting job. They can be quite tight from the factory. That one, actually, is probably the loosest one from the factory that I've ever had. Uh, Tom is also going to have a Maglode 2.2 muzzle brake. He has asked for it in red. Uh, we can do special order colours for you on the muzzle brakes, but we don't hold them in stock. Um, it's currently being colour processed as we speak. So again, that's going to be another uh, addition later on. But for this, really simple. We've got a plate. Locate the little uh, lugs down in there. And we've got, I'm actually saying that, I probably don't need the extender. There we go. So I was saying at the beginning of the video, oh, and your nut as well, saying at the, video, the beginning of the video, the uh, sort of geometry uh, of the original handguard and aftermarket. So it's these blocks that end up mating against uh, the upper receiver. Uh, that's what tends to be missing and there's space so it, you, you can get the leverage on it. Obviously with the Maglode one it's 1522 specific so it locks right up against it. So to get that back on obviously we just want to Slide it over the barrel and drop the nut back on. Now I'm probably going to need this extender. And there we have it. It's all installed, all ready. If I can do it, you can certainly do it. And we have, uh, just have a look at the, the carbon fiber there. So again, made to Maglode specification and it does, is a little longer than the original. So if you're gonna want to mount accessories, again on the slotted version, or if you're just going for full competition, whoop, there goes the bowl, um, and you, you sort of your speed steel gun where you're not necessarily going to need any things mounted to it. I know that Tom is obviously part of the committee down in Froome, and they love their their dark stages. They're underneath a, a brew, uh, an active brewery, uh, so they can switch off all the lights. It's the the basement, and they do their night stages. So he will definitely want to be fitting uh, flashlights, and he's also said he wants to fit bipods on it as well. So he's he will want the slotted one. Again, we will swap that over for him at a later date. Uh, but again, for speed still, you know, you don't want anything you know, on your hand. Maybe, maybe something to index. We've talked about that before with the stops, but it makes the gun so much lighter on the front. You think the polo Polymer one doesn't really weigh that much. Well, the carbon fiber one just doesn't seem to weigh anything at all. Yes, so two more uh, additions. So obviously when the extra mags come in, then Tom will be, you know, we'll be fitting those bases. And when we've got the, the muzzle brake done, we'll also be putting that on as well. But this is gonna to be Tom's setup for the time being. I'm sure he's gonna get an aftermarket stock and grip at some point. Uh, the sights are a bit superfluous now because well, there's no Picatinny rail at the top uh, and you're gonna, um, you know, can't really use the, the rear one without the, the front one, but maybe again, he might wanna M-lock that on, put some Picatinny rail on the, the M-lock slots when he has that one. But yeah, just to recap, so we've got the carbon fiber handguard, the first one from Maglode to be fitted to say a customer's gun outside of Maglode. We've got the ambidextrous 30 degree safety, ambidextrous 
uh, mag release, you've got the very, very popular 1522 Magwell from Magload uh, and the new uh, Black Rifle Trigger. Nice, nicely crisp. But yeah, we're very, very pleased to see the first Magload handguard on there. And again, talking about the block, now that it's on the uh, rifle, you can see that it just mates up. Uh, so there's no up and down motion. There's no flex there in the receiver. It's absolutely uh, solid, but great to see that on there and can't wait to see what Tom has planned with it. He has told me he has a color scheme for this. I think the whole gun will get Cerakoted at some point. So we'll probably catch up with him at a later date and see the, the finished article, but he's gonna come pick this up tomorrow and I really hope he enjoys it. And there is a tradition with Tom having guns delivered here in the gun room and you've gotta give it the lick test. And usually I go for a little lick, but that just looks far too tasty. That one's for you, Tom. But there we go, guys. So again, if you're interested in the Maglode carbon fiber handguard, go and check out maglode.co.uk. I promise we won't lick yours. It's only Tom's um, or anyone we seem to, to, to like. But there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed for future videos. And as always, guys, hope to see you soon.